Number one. Are you ready? Are you ready? Tremendous show, tremendous success. You can't kill an idea, but ideas can kill you. What if I told you that this has all happened before? The riots, the violence, church burning, attacks on police, destruction of private property, all in the name of equality. What is the deadliest thing mankind has ever encountered in world history? Is it disease, famine, nuclear weapons? Not even close. By sheer body count, it's an idea. This is the story of the deadliest virus in the world, communism. The year is 1848. Europe is burning. Political upheaval leads to mass violent riots in over 50 countries. Buildings burn, shops are looted, and national militias are called in to quell the mob. Sound familiar? This year, an obscure socialist named Karl Marx publishes the Communist Manifesto. The Communist Manifesto outlines how to destroy capitalism and usher in communism through the means of socialism. To accomplish this goal, the manifesto pits two groups against each other based on their identity. Bourgeois versus proletariat. Essentially, business owners versus the workers of that business. See, identity hatred is the key component that makes communism work. The history of all hitherto existing society is the history of class struggles, Marx writes. Today, we would call this identity politics. The principle is the same. Define people by their groups and pit them against each other with a perceived injustice, and then violence. Marx embraces violence. He calls for the forcible overthrow of all existing social conditions and for the common ruin of the classes. What we are left with after this violent class warfare is a communist state. Marx spells out plainly what this looks like. Complete state ownership of your life. No private property high taxes, government control of communications and media, government jobs for workers, government income for all workers, mandatory government education, and government that supersedes the church in power. These are the programs that the left is pushing today, nearly 200 years after the writing of the Communist Manifesto. And they're using identity politics and, yes, violence to do it. Remember, this is about power and control. In 1917, Marx's ideas got their big shot. Vladimir Lenin was a Russian Marxist living in exile in Switzerland during World War I. Lenin believed wholeheartedly in communism and saw the Russian political upheaval during the war as his shot to create a communist state. Shockingly, when Lenin asked the German military for passage to Russia in the midst of a war between the two countries, Germany enthusiastically said yes. The Germans treated Lenin and his communism as a deadly weapon to be used against their Russian enemy, a virus to infect the opponent and cripple them. The Germans agreed to transport Lenin across the front lines into Russia, but only via a sealed train, so Lenin and his virus could not break out into Germany. Unleashing the deadly weapon of communism on the Russian people was a horrifically effective tactic. As soon as Lenin arrived in Russia, he began to employ identity politics and social justice as a potent tool in his civil war. Lenin told his armed revolutionaries in 1918, Comrade, hang, and I mean hang so that the people can see, not less than 100 known rich men. Do this so that for hundreds of miles around, the people can see, tremble, know, and cry. They are killing and will go on killing. Lenin won using identity politics to pit groups against each other, incite violence, create anarchy, and then the virus took hold. Private property and businesses were immediately dissolved. Freedom of speech eliminated. Individual freedoms crushed. Economic collapse. Famine. Starvation. Secret police raids. Millions of Russians sent to concentration camps. More people were sent to concentration camps in communist Russia than in Nazi Germany. In spite of practiced horrors in Russia, communism spread, and always by force. Eastern Europe, China, Vietnam, Cambodia, North Korea, Cuba, and parts of Africa fell to communist revolutions and dictators. It's critical to note, this mass death is not caused by foreign forces, 
but from within. Communism kills in the name of equality. They kill their own people. Communists do not care. They are indifferent to the suffering. Man-made famines and mass starvation in concentration camps are the norm, the cost of social justice. The death toll numbers under communism are staggering. Eastern Europe, 1 million. Vietnam, 1 million. Afghanistan, 1.5 million. Africa, 1.7 million. North Korea, 2 million. Cambodia, 2 million. Soviet Russia, 20 million people. But nowhere is the genocidal, sociopathic bloodlust of communism more evident than the dark history of communist China. China became a communist state in 1949 after a bloody, prolonged civil war led by Mao Zedong. After becoming a communist dictator, Mao joked about the killing of business owners in his own country. 30 million people. We have so many people, we can afford to lose a few. Mao's attempt to industrialize China, known as the Great Leap Forward, murdered more than 45 million people in a few short years, many simply from starvation. A total of 65 million Chinese nationals were murdered under Mao's communism. Mao kept power in spite of the genocide. Communists never give up power, ever. They don't have to. The state is God and you are nothing. Mao's political party remains in power in China to this day, and they exercise an iron-clad grip on its people. The Communist Party of China's failed response to the coronavirus cost many innocent people their lives. The virus outbreak, most likely from incompetent management of their own viral labs, was made exponentially worse by the communist regime's inability to admit wrongdoing and warn the rest of the world. These actions directly led to the global spread of the deadly virus, resulting in the deaths of tens of thousands of Americans. But as always, with communism, the worst is yet to come. Many of the organized leftists torching American cities are Marxists. They admit it, they say so, and they are practicing the tenets of communism to the letter. We uh, are trained Marxists. Um, we are uh, super... Uh, first um, on sort of ideological theories. Use identity and class division to destroy private property in the name of justice. Demonize capitalists. Publicly persecute those who disagree with you. Incite violence and seize power and control. In 1932, Stalinist-backed communists in Germany formed a group to violently clash with police, terrorize the public, and physically assault their political enemies in the street. The name of that group, Antifasciste Acton Antifa. This was their symbol. Their tactics have now moved to our streets, and so have their motivations. Vladimir Lenin and Karl Marx both agreed. The goal of socialism is communism. Power and control. It is always about power and control. What is happening right now in America is not new. In fact, it's centuries old. The tactics are meant to bewilder you and make you question your institutions. They're meant to divide us and raise what we know as America to the ground. It's a revolution by the deadliest virus known to man. Communism. You can't kill an idea, but ideas can kill you. We must fight this virus to survive. Why do I even worry about some silly little statues coming down or some silly little street names changing? Why do I care? It's because the last time I didn't care about this, I was a teenager. I have already lived through this thing when I was living in Venezuela. Statues came down, Chavez didn't want that history displayed, and then he changed the street names, then came the curriculum, then some movies couldn't be shown on certain TV channels, and so on and so forth. You guys think it can happen to you? I've heard this so many times. But always be on guard. Never believe something can't happen to you. You need to guard your country and your society or it will be destroyed. We didn't believe it could happen to us. Us Venezuelans, Cubans warned us. And we're like, Venezuela, we know what freedom is like. That's not gonna happen here. Yet it happened. And there's clearly a lot of people wanting to destroy the US. Well, you spoke several times before about ideological subversion. That is a phrase that uh, I'm afraid some Americans don't fully understand. 
when uh, the Soviets use the phrase ideological subversion, what do they mean by it? Ideological subversion is, is the process which is legitimate, overt, and open. You, you can see it with your own eyes. All, all you have to do, all American mass media has to do is to unplug their bananas from their ears, open up their eyes, and they can see it. There is no mystery. There is nothing to do with espionage. I know that espionage intelligence gathering looks more romantic. It sells more deodorants through the advertising, probably. That's why your Hollywood producers are so crazy about James Bond type of, of, of thrillers. But in reality, the main emphasis of the KGB is not in the area of it intelligence at all. According to my uh, opinion and opinion of many defectors of my caliber, only about 15% of time, money, and manpower is spent on espionage as such. The other 85% is a slow process which we call either ideological subversion or active measures, activne meropriyatia in the language of, of the KGB, or psychological warfare. What it basically means is to change the perception of reality of every American to such an extent that despite of the abundance of information, no one is able to come to sensible conclusions in the interest of defending themselves, their families, their community, and their country. It's a great brainwashing uh, process which goes very slow and it's divided in, in four basic stages. Uh, the first one being demoralization. It takes from 15 to 20 years to demoralize a nation. Why that many years? because this is the minimum number of years which requires to uh, educate one generation of students in the country of, of, of your enemy, exposed to the ideology of the enemy. In other words, Marxism-Leninism ideology is being pumped into the soft heads of, of, of at least three generations of American students without being challenged or counterbalanced by the basic values of Americanism, American patriotism. The result? The result you can see, most of the people who graduated in the 60s, dropouts or half-baked intellectuals, are now occupying the positions of power in the government, civil service, business, mass media, educational system. You are stuck with them. You cannot get rid of them. They are contaminated. They are programmed to think and react to certain stimuli in a certain pattern. You cannot change their mind, even if you... If you expose them to authentic information, even if you prove that white is white and black is, uh, is black, you still cannot change the basic perception and the logic of behavior. In other words, these people, uh, uh, the process of demoralization is complete and irreversible. To get rid society of these people, you, have, you need another 20 or, or, or 15 years to educate a new generation of patriotically minded and, and, and uh, common, common sense people who would be acting in favor and in the interests of, of the uh, of, uh, United States society. And yet these people who have been programmed and, as you say, in place and yes. who are favorable to an opening with the Soviet concept, mm -hmm. these are the very people who would be marked for extermination in this country? Most of them, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, simply because the psychological shock when, when they will see in future what the, what the beautiful society of equality and social justice means in practice, obviously they will revolt. They, 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 will, uh, they, they will be very unhappy, frustrated people. And the Marxist-Leninist regime does not tolerate these people. Uh, they, obviously they will join the links of dissenters, mm -hmm. dissidents. Uh, unlike in present United States, there will be no place for dissent in, in future Marxist-Leninist America. Uh, here you can, you can get uh, popular like uh, Daniel Ellsberg and filthy rich like Jane Fonda for being dissident, for criticizing your Pentagon. In future, these people will be simply squashed like cockroaches. Nobody is going to pay them nothing for their beautiful, noble ideas of equality. This they don't understand, and uh, it will be greatest shock for them, of course. The demoralization process in the United States is basically completed already. Uh, for the last 25 years, actually it's over-fulfilled, because uh, demoralization now reaches such areas where previously not even Comrade Andropov and, and all his experts would, 
would even dream of such a tremendous success. Most of it is done by Americans to Americans, thanks to lack of moral standards. As I mentioned before, uh, exposure to true information does not matter anymore. A person who was demoralized is unable to assess true information. The facts tell nothing to him. Uh, even if I shower him with information, with, with authentic proof, with documents, with pictures, even if I take him by force to the Soviet Union and show him concentration camp, he will refuse to believe it until he, he is going to receive a kick in, the, in his fat bottom. When a military boot crashes his then he will understand, but not before that. That's the tragic of the situation of demoralization. So basically America is stuck with, with demoralization and unless, even if, if you start right now, here, this minute, you start educating new generation of Americans, it will still take you 15 to 20 years to turn the tide of, uh, of ideological perception of reality uh, back to normal, n normalcy and, and uh, patriotism. The next stage is destabilization. This time, subverter does not care about your ideas and the patterns of your consumption. Whether you eat junk food and get fat and flabby, it doesn't matter anymore. This time, and it takes only from two to five years to destabilize a nation, uh, it's, what, what matters is essentials. Economy, foreign relations, defense systems. Uh, and you can see it quite clearly that in some areas, uh, in such sensitive areas as, as uh, defense and economy. Uh, the uh, influence of Marxist-Leninist ideas in the United States is absolutely fantastic. I, I could never believe it 14 years ago when I landed uh, in this part of the world that the process will go that fast. Uh, the next stage, of course, is crisis. It, it, it may take only up to six weeks to, to bring a country to the verge of crisis. You can see it in, in Central America now. And after crisis, with a violent change of, of power, structure, and economy, you have so-called the period of normalization. It may last indefinitely. Normalization is a cynical expression borrowed from Soviet propaganda. When the Soviet tanks moved into Czechoslovakia in 68, Comrade Brezhnev said, now the situation in brotherly Czechoslovakia is normalized. This is what will happen in the United States if you allow all these schmucks to bring the country to crisis to promise people all kind of goodies and the paradise on earth, uh, to, to destabilize your uh, economy, to eliminate the principle of free market competition, and to put a big brother government in Washington, D.C., with the benevolent dictators like Walter Mondale, who will promise lots of things, never mind whether the promises are fulfillable or not. He will go to Moscow to kiss the bottoms of, of new generation of Soviet assassins, never mind, he will create false illusions that the uh, situation is under control. Situation is not under control. Situation is disgustingly out of control. Most of the American politicians, media and educational system trains another generation of people who think they are living at a peace time. False. The United States is in the state of war, undeclared total war against the basic principles and the foundations of, of this system. And, and the initiator of this war is not Comrade Andropov, of course. Uh, it's, it's the system, however ridiculous it may sound, the world communist system or the world communist conspiracy. Whether I scare some people or not, I don't give a hoot. Uh, if, if you are not scared by now, nothing can scare you. But you don't have to be paranoid about it. What, what actually happens now, that unlike myself, you have literally several years to live on unless the United States wake up. The, the time bomb is ticking with every second. The disaster is coming closer and closer. Unlike myself, you will have nowhere to defect to unless you want to live in Antarctica with penguins. This is it. This is the last country of freedom and, and possibility. Okay, so what do we do? What is your recommendation to the American people? Well, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the immediate thing that comes to my mind is, of course, there must be a very strong national effort to educate people in, in, in the spirit of real patriotism, number one. Number two, to, 
to explain them the real danger of socialist, communist, whatever, welfare state, big brother government. If people will fail to grasp the impending danger of that development, nothing ever can help United States. You may kiss goodbye to your freedom, including freedoms to, to homosexuals, to uh, prison inmates. All this freedom will vanish, evaporate in, in five seconds, including your precious lives. Um, the second thing, I, the moment at least part of the United States population is convinced that the danger is real, they have to force their government. And I'm not talking about sending letters, signing petitions, and all this beautiful, noble activity. I'm talking about forcing United States government to stop aiding communism. Because there is no other problem more burning and, and urgent than to stop the Soviet military-industrial complex from destroying what is whatever is left of the free world. And it is very easy to do. No credits, no technology, no money, no political or diplomatic recognition, and of course no such idiocy as grain deals to USSR. The Soviet people, 270 millions of, of Soviets, will be eternally thankful to you if you stop aiding a bunch of murderers who sit now in Kremlin and whom President Reagan respectfully calls government. They do not govern anything, least of all such complexity as the Soviet economy. So basic, two, two very simple, maybe two simplistic answers or solutions, but never, nevertheless they are the only solutions. Educate yourself, understand what's going on around you. You are not living at the time of peace. You are in a state of war and you have precious little time to save yourself. Um, you don't have much time, especially if you are talking about young generation. There's not much time left for convulsions uh, uh, to the beautiful uh, disco music. Very soon it will go, just, just overnight. If we are talking about capitalists or, or, or wealthy businessmen, they, I think they are selling the rope on which they will hang very soon. If they don't stop, if they cannot curb the unsettled desire for profit, and if they keep on trading with the monster of the Soviet communism, they are going to hang very soon. And it, they will pray to be killed, but unfortunately they will be sent to Alaska probably to manage industry of slaves. It's, it's simplistic. I know it sounds unpleasant. I know Americans don't like to listen to things which are unpleasant. But I have defected not to tell you the stories about such idiocy as, as microfilm, James Bond type, espionage. This is garbage. Uh, you don't need any espionage anymore. I have come to talk about survival. It's a question of survival of this system. Um, you may ask me, what is it in for me? Survival, obviously, because unlike, I, as I said, I am now in your boat. If, if we sing together, we'll sing beautifully together. There is no other place on this planet to defect to. If I say all lives matter, I'm a racist. If I stand for my flag, I have to apologize for it. I'm not allowed to go to church, but I can burn churches to the ground. I'm not allowed to open my own business, but I can go loot and destroy other people's businesses. If I wear a badge, have a gun, and I'm dressed in blue, I'm a racist pig. But if I walk around destroying my city with bricks and masks, I'm considered a peaceful protester. I'm not allowed to peacefully protest the lockdown at my capital, but I can go destroy and graffiti my capital. I'm not allowed to go to the park to play TV with my family, but I can destroy the park. I'm not allowed to protect our historical monuments and history, but I can go tear them down and have them land on top of people. I'm not allowed to have an opinion on racial matters because I'm white, but if I don't have an opinion on it, I'm the reason why people are oppressed. I can go riot in the streets with the BLM, but if I go to a Trump rally, COVID-19 magically appears. Does anyone else not see the hypocrisy in all of this? I am done with your bullshit. When Donald Trump wants a wall around our southern border, it's considered racist. But domestic terrorists who take over a six by six block in Washington is considered patriotic. Joe Biden is allowed to blackmail the president of Ukraine, but when Donald Trump asks about it, that's an impeachable offense. A $5 billion border wall is apparently too expensive, but a $1.5 trillion free health care system is apparently achievable. People who never owned slaves have to pay reparations to people who never were slaves. I'm not allowed to cheat to get into college because 
because I'll go to jail. But if I cheat to get into this country, I get free everything. People who never went to college have to pay for kids who made stupid choices and decided to go to college. We're catching and releasing criminals because apparently it's an infringement on their right. I'm not allowed to purchase a firearm, but you're totally allowed to go purchase drugs, alcohol, and get an abortion. Irish and German scientists and engineers have to go through a very serious vetting process before being admitted into the United States, but immigrants from our southern border get to come in whenever they want. Black Lives Matter is a Marxist organization run by three avowed Marxists. Go check. Black Lives Matter has been planning to destroy the police for three years. They've finally gotten stupid Democrat mayors to agree with them. All the lawlessness is happening in Democrat cities run by Democrats sometimes for 40, 50, and 100 years. There hasn't been a Republican mayor there in forever except New York. And it was me. And I brought crime down 65%. And Bloomberg got it up to 75%. And right now murder is up 58% under the regressive Democrat mayor, who's typical of Democrat mayors all over the country. They are a disaster. They're a danger to- I'm telling you, if you didn't think it's too damn bad, but don't destroy my stuff. Don't burn down my school. Come on, Uncle. I work too hard for this. People don't even understand nothing. Come on. That's not right. That's not right. My friend, you are just adorable. Tremendous show, tremendous success.